U.S. President Donald Trump has promised enhanced military support to Nigeria. The pledge was made during a phone call with President Muhammadu Buhari. The U.S. President also spoke to South African President Jacob Zuma about trade and security. From New York, William Densler reports. According to a special advisor to President Buhari, Donald Trump told his Nigerian counterpart to keep up the good work that he's doing and spoke of a US readiness to cut a new deal on military weapons for Nigeria's fight against terrorism, specifically against the Islamic extremist group Boko Haram, with President Trump also inviting President Buhari to Washington at a time that is mutually convenient. Now, this phone call very much aligns with what President Trump's Deputy Assistant Sebastian Gorka says are America's key security priorities. This administration understands that our enemy is a global conspiracy. It is a conspiracy of individuals who subscribe to the jihadist movement. And Boko Haram is a great example. Boko Haram is part of the Islamic State, swore allegiance to Abu Bakr, was accepted into the Islamic State. So we will deal with it as it must be dealt with, as a global phenomena and a threat to all decent people everywhere. According to a specialist on U.S.-African affairs with the human rights group Amnesty International, they say that they're seeing a worrying trend with the Trump administration, and that is an increased U.S. support for military action by regional governments with less oversight and accountability. That They say that that's a combination that they describe as frightening. Now, Donald Trump has spoken with his South African counterpart, Jacob Zuma, and according to Zuma's office, the two men reaffirmed their commitment to strengthening what they see as already strong bilateral relations between the two nations. They also focused on strong trade relations and U.S. investment in South Africa, with the two also agreeing to work together on what they see as a quest for peace and stability on the African continent. William Denslow, CGTN, New York. Well, let's get more insight into today's calls. We have Deji Badmus joining us in Lagos and Sumitra Naidu in Johannesburg. Both of you, welcome to the show. Deji, I'll start with you. Now, we know Nigeria has had a long-standing cordial relations uh, with the United States, but we did see Trump's call today mainly focus on security. Now, in terms of immigration and economic cooperation, did we hear anything? Uh, could we see that relationship, relationship change? Well, the, the jury is still out uh, in, in terms of what exactly would happen uh, when it comes to immigration and uh, economic relations now between uh, Nigeria and the United States of America. Um, the, the general impression here is that, um, well, that when it comes to immigration, we, we do not know for sure, you know, how the U.S. will uh, relate or deal with Nigeria because, I mean, let's tell ourselves the truth. You have quite a number of... Um, a significant number of Nigerian immigrants now in the United States of America, but we also know that these Nigerians are contributing significantly to the, uh, to the U.S. economy, and they're doing some great stuff in that country. Uh, in terms of economic relations, um, well, the general belief is that the relations will uh, definitely improve. Um, Niger of course, the United States used to be uh, the, the main uh, consumer of Nigeria's oil, even though uh, at some point we saw that come down. But um, the expectation is that relations will improve in that regard economically. But we cannot tell for now because uh, for now what is actually happening is that everyone is watching uh, President Trump cautiously uh, to wait for him to unveil his economic agenda uh, before we'll, we'll actually be able to tell what... Um, you know, uh, the U.S. will be putting on the table. But uh, generally, the expectation is that um, these relations will improve and um, uh, that whether we like it or not, Nigeria is a very strategic partner, economic partner now uh, for the United States, and that it's one country that the United States cannot afford to ignore when it comes to the African continent. But then we just right. have to wait and see how uh, this all plays out. But mm. in terms of immigration, well, we just have to wait and see. The jury is still out on that. Mm. Well, Sumitra, over in South Africa, we know it also enjoys a strong t trade relations uh, with the United States. About 600 American companies uh, operate in South Africa. However, there has been some anxiety over Trump's uh, pledge to renegotiate uh, some of those trade deals, trade deals such as AGOA. Uh, what do South Africans think? 
Yes, yeah, Sergio. Well, South Africa has, um, you know, put in a lot of work, built up its relationship with the U.S. over the years. And this is essentially why many are concerned that, uh, you know, some of these long-standing agreements, some that took a long time to negotiate, may be scrapped. And that's really because uh, of Donald Trump's policies. They're very protectionist, very isolated. He's not a fan of globalization. He's spoken of reviving car manufacturing in the U.S. This is a key sector in South Africa. He's talking about growing the agriculture industry there again important uh, sector for South Africa Trump wants to manufacture and create value chains essentially on home soil this of course will impact the trade between the two countries South Africa has a trade surplus with the US exports to the region uh, totaled over nine billion dollars in 2015 for South Africa this is significant and yes losing a goa remains the biggest concern but unlike some of the trade deals that Trump has already cancelled a goa is an act it's been signed into law if he does want to reopen this deal which has just been renegotiated for the next 10 years it will take a very long time and most experts believe that trump just would leave that he wouldn't actually spend his time trying to reopen these negotiations apart from trade there's also concerns around aid south africa and the continent benefit from massive aid agreements like pepfa Trump, though, is not a fan of foreign aid. He uh, may insist on cutting this aid. Action and climate change is another concern. It's another area that Trump is not keen on. And Africa is one of the continents where, you know, that's most vulnerable when it comes to the impacts of climate change, like food security. So lots of concern all around. Again, you know, it really depends on what he's going to do. Right, right. Well, many thanks to both of you. We'll certainly be watching Sumitra Naido there in Johannesburg and Deji Batmus in Lagos.